This broadcast is part of the IC Robots Radio Network. Visit icrobots.com for this and many other nerd slash nostalgia related podcasts. You won't be sorry for long. live on Jupiter's third largest moon, Callisto. In this corner with the 98, the subject of suckers, object of hate, who's the one something is great? Here's your host, IC Robots. Greetings, Earth people. I am from Jupiter. It is me again, IC Robots. I am not a hero, but I do sacrifice a bit of my week each and every week. Make your week a bit less week. And this week, I think it's going to get so much, so much less week. we got a ton of fun stuff. We, uh... We're going to take a look at three different movies that I saw. We're going to talk about Tag, Ocean's 8, and then the main event, Jurassic. Jurassic World, it's going to be a hoot. I gotta, I gotta do jam here. Let me, um, uh, let me, let me look around and see if I can find it. All right, here is, oh, sorry, uh, I hit it. That much, that much is true. That is, is, of course, the great, the great times up by, by OC. And you may, you may have heard a new, a new voice there at the, at the top of the show. And that is, that is a story that needs to be told. The, the voice belongs to a new hire, a new, a new Pooptronics hire. That is, that's the new the new ensign over in Pod B because I I don't even feel cool talking about this at all. It's not normally what we do here. We don't we don't we try hard not to not to talk about the sadder things in life. But the ensign the ensign in the ensign in Pod B was she was killed this weekend by by a space flea over over in her pod. My my dude Esquilito a while back he he made some jokes about some space fleas not knowing that a space flea is it's a deadly problem we have up here on the station they are not like they are not like the fleas that we know down there down there on earth they they go about 15 20 25 pounds and they they come up on you in packs of packs of two or three and the ensign in Pod B was caught. She was caught asleep. She was caught alone over there. And the the space fleas they they drank all of her blood. They sucked her. They sucked her dry. They left her a hollow a hollow husk. The the ensign has been with us since since the beginning. She's done she's done every intro for the show. She's here. I see her when I'm when I'm in the booth. I I don't talk a lot about the behind the scenes, but. I am here in a recording booth that engineer Emily put up, and I, I I can see out. I can see out into her area, and usually, usually the incident Pod B is out there. She has a microphone, she has a stand, and she's she's doing the intro and the announcement, much like much like Don Pardo would do back in the back in the highlights of the the late night TV days. She she's doing the intro for me, real pro style, and I. I've never, I've never talked about the importance of having her on the show, but she's been, she's been a big piece of everything we, we do here. She, 
She's Engineer Emily's best friend, and they would spend a lot of times in the booth when I was here, when I was here cleaning out the vents. They would be in here recording these little bits that you hear, these little, these little songs. They, they would did like three or four different little EPMD songs. They had a plan to create the first all-girl EPMD cover band, and sadly, sadly, those, those dreams have died. She, she's nothing but a husk. We, we put her inside of a, a coffee can and we shot her. We shot what was left in the space. The husk, the husk was so dry, it just folded up in there. But we, we have to keep marching on. Life is for the living, and as sad as it is, this isn't the first person that space has claimed. And we're just gonna, we're gonna keep keep marching on. When when I informed the commodore of what happened up here, he he quickly sent a replacement. The incident pod bees actual factual job is she does data entry for the for the robotic mining outfit that that pooptronics has over there it's small they're looking for i don't even really know what they're looking for they they don't seem to dig up a lot of things of value i i don't know i i don't i don't pay that much attention to it they're they're over there doing their thing i'm over here doing the doing the cell tower thing and the show thing and never Never the twain shall meet. But when I when I when I spoke to the Commodore, he was quick to he was quick to send a send a replacement for the data entry job. And Pooptronics is it's a British owned company, so he he sent another another Brit gal. And Emily asked her, "Hey, do you want to? We do this show over here. Do you want to come and you want to be on the show?" And she she was happy enough to agree. I can see her. I can see her right there. I'm I'm giving her a friendly wave. Hey, hey, what's up there, Ensign? Um, hopefully, hopefully it's gonna work out great. I have a feeling it is. She, she seems like she's into what we do, and she seems like it's gonna, it's gonna be a good fit. But like I said, sadly, life, life is for the living. We have to move forward, and as sad as it is, it's in Melissa over in Pod B. They reminisce over you. Yo, I see robots. These fools be riding the Zack. Let's get stupid. Hello bags of mostly water. It is me, Hollywood celeb Johnny. Five from the classic Hollywood movies. Short circuit and short circuit number two. I am here today to tell you about the latest hip thing. It is called cryptocurrency. I am sure you haven't heard of it. It is a money that is only on the internet and is very cool and cutting edge. While this may seem confusing, trust me it is really great and something you should come to believe in. My crypto is called Johnny Coins. It will sell at a starting point of $1 a coin but will be worth Slow it down. at least $1000 by the end of the day. I promise. I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Yeah, yeah. Up in my mouth and my hand on my nose. Yeah, yeah. The world moving fast. So there it is. That is uh, that's the that's the Johnny Coin commercial that AB Silver AB Silver commissioned last week when when he was on the show, he paid in he paid engineer Emily um sixty thousand Johnny coins to make that I I wanna say for the record that they they cannot guarantee that Johnny Coins will be worth a thousand dollars by the end of the day. That's that's not something that we here at the at the good old the T R U R P T stand behind. So if you buy a bunch of Johnny Coins, um, and that doesn't that doesn't happen, don't blame me. The crypto market is it's very volatile. I guess I I don't even know where he's going with this on. On Twitter the other day, this guy, this guy Johnny Five was out there. He was, he was trying to get people to straight up buy Johnny Coins online. He said that he was, that he was going to send a bill to somebody. I forget if it was, maybe it was Engineer Nerd or Tapes from the Crypt. He, he said somebody was getting sent with a $50,000 bill. I hope that's, I hope that's not true. I, I don't want to see that show up at their house and for them to be, them to be all annoyed. I don't want to, I don't want to see, I don't want to see Tapes from the Crypt get his, Get his credit ruined by this Johnny Coin thing. Don't, don't buy him just because you're you're like into the show. That's not that is not at all what we what we recommend. If you wanna if you wanna see Johnny Five on on the tweets, it's at it's me Johnny 
like he's introducing himself. Hey, it's me, Johnny. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's kind of worth it in a way. He just kind of, kind of yells at people. He yells at Ferg all the time. He yells at Gino Vega. He was arguing with, um, argue with Iceberg the other day. I, I kind of find it entertaining in the way one likes, one likes a Jerry Springer type show. You just, you don't know what he's going to say. I, I'm curious how this Johnny Coin thing is going to turn out. I do not think, I don't think I'll be buying any myself. Eh, maybe a couple. They're only a dollar each. I mean, I could go, I could go in for like five or six without, uh, without sweating it too much. I could go as far as like eight dollars. That's the price of, that's the price of a Star Wars fig over at Target. I could probably make do without that General Hux I've been considering for Considering for like half a year now, I I don't want to get him, but I do want I do want that droid he comes with. So, the lesson of this is follow Johnny Five on Twitter if you want a laugh or two, and also if you buy Johnny coins, it's officially at your own risk. And yeah, you know, Emily put together a good commercial there. Let's let's uh let's not forget about that. We are now going to move into the uh, the middle portion of the show. This is. This is something we like to call At The Movies. In a moment, At The Movies without Ebert, Cisco, or even that dude Roper. But you've got icy robots, so that's something, right? The Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. It needs 20 people. Seven people? Game on. I don't do that anymore. It's a big job. Are you mad? Yeah. Do you want me to set up a meeting? Yes. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, $150 million. Holy crap. Ocean's Aid. Only in cinemas. That is, that is so weird to hear a different person, different person doing that. I... I mean, you know, it will, it's that I'm super happy that you're here helping us, but it's been so many in a row hearing the same, the same person. I, I like how you do it. Don't, don't, no, she, she's waving. Don't wave your arms. Don't get upset. I'm sorry. I like, I like how you do it. It's just, it's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit, a little bit of adjusting. The, the movie we're gonna talk about right now is a movie known as Ocean's 8. It is the latest in the, in the saga of Danny Ocean, but the hook is... Danny Ocean's not in it. His sister, played by Sandy Bullock, is instead the one who's leading an all-gal crew of super crooks. The the movie was all right. It was fine. I I had such a hassle seeing this. They are they're doing construction at the big main downtown 14 screen theater. So half half the screens are just out of business. So everything is tightened into this one this one floor and they actually had to play Ocean's 8 at the at the RD Farty Theater where it was only getting like two or three showings a day. And for whatever reason, 2.0 wanted to see this one too, which is fine. I'm happy. I'm happy to have her along, but she wanted to see this one too. But getting all three of our schedules in line combined with the three showings of the movie over at uh over at Summerfield was it wasn't easy. We went one time and it was sold out, completely sold out. We had to go, we had to go back home. Fortunately, it was only like a five minute drive, but then we tried again and it was again sold out. Finally, we went and we were able to go see it. And sadly, after all that trouble, it was, it was only all right. It's fine. Sandy Bullock is She's America's sweetheart. She's great. Everything, everything about her is awesome. It's always fun to see her in a movie. Kate Blanchett, the greatest actress in the world. Kate Blanchett is playing the playing the Brad Pitt role in in this one. And when it comes to being cool, nobody's cooler than cooler than Kate. And that was that was fine. The I think what I think what was lacking is that the other Oceans movies, the recent ones, not the not the one with Frankie Sinatra from from the sixties. The recent ones were all they were all directed by Steven Soderbergh, and Soderbergh is a really good director who has he has a very distinct style, and his style brought it brought a certain coolness to to the movies, even if even if they weren't always dynamite. I'm not saying they were always dynamite. They, they do have like a very cool factor, and this one 
This new one was directed by a cat named Gary Ross, and while he's he's fine, he's perfectly fine, he's not he's not a Steven Sodenberg, and when he when he tried to ape the style a bit, it comes out it comes out like like Steven Soderberg light, and I I liked it. It was fine, like I said, but it wasn't it wasn't as cool as the uh, the Ocean's movies in in the past. I I did have a good time. I enjoyed it. It's always cool to see a complicated a complicated heist come together come together like this. I. I do think that if I were casting this movie, I might have I might have switched it up a bit from from some of the gals they had in this. There was like Sarah Paulson and Mindy Kaling and Rihanna and um, Aquafina and these people are all fine, but I would have looked for I would have looked for some cooler some cooler gals like a well like my 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 current obsession Sophia Batella might have been cool in this or or like Zazé Beats or whatever, but. They kind of went with with a conservative hand. I might have I might have given some you know some up and comers a chance at the at this. Um, I don't know. It's okay. the The gimmick of the flick is they are robbing the Met Gala for this super valuable Cartier necklace, and they you know they have all these all these complicated schemes and measures and gadgets and stuff, and it is. It is what it is. It is, it is a good sequel to Ocean's Thirteen. Ocean's Eleven is the best. Ocean's Twelve is fine. Ocean's Thirteen is fine. This one continues along on the, on the road of just, of just being fine. It's not spectacular. It's just, it is, it is just what it is. And I wish it would have been so much more after. After actually driving down to the theater three different times. Three different times to see it. What can you do, though? You know, things only turn out as good as as good as they turn out. So, with all that said, on the, on the good old-fashioned Source Magazine mic meter with one being a dud and five being an all-time classic, I am... I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give Ocean's 8 a solid three, three mics. Mic. It's fine. Three mics. same game attack for 30 years if you want to win you have to play dirty shut the tag up get up eat my eat my tag that was one of the top five worst experiences of my life you're gonna tag my tiny ginger tag why don't you go tag each other off he tagged his pants he tagged his pants and yeah there was some mud on my pants the mud is just same place hat hey, comes out tag rated r june 15th the uh the second movie that I saw this week was a movie a movie known as Tag. It is a comedy. Some people are calling it the uh, the funniest movie of the year so far. I don't know about all that. I did I did like it, but I don't know if it was the funniest. I think I think maybe the funniest movie this year may have been Deadpool two. I think that's the movie that I think that's the movie that I laughed at the most. But at any rate, Tag is. Tag is the story of a group of dudes. They're they're all in like their thirties and forties and stuff, and they they still play this game of tag that they started playing back when back when they were youths back in the back in the olden days. And the game the game it kind of you know it spans the entire country. They don't see each other all the time, but when they do, they tag it up. And the the story is loosely based on these ten dudes who actually actually did this and the the thing got carried in like the wall street journal and it it made some news and stuff i i watched a news clip about it because i was i was a bit interested these guys they lived in spokane washington which is that's a a place i i'm interested in for for some reason i don't know i think that it's it's where the red dawn redo took place and it looked like a nice nice place I've I wanted to go visit Spokane but I never I never have anyway these these kids uh dudes rather they I am having a, the hardest time keeping a train right now keeping a keeping a thought train my eyes my eyes keep getting diverted to this this pack of their their Star Wars black porgs I want to I want to open these porgs I haven't yet I've talked about this 
I've talked about these guys when I got them, and I do want to open them. I got them at Target, but I just haven't done it yet. But they're they're catching my they're catching my eye right now. Anyway, these guys place tag, and they tag it up all over the place. And once once a year for one month, they they have this tag game. This is like this is like one of the most disjointed reviews I've ever done. And for that that I apologize. I'm also a little hungry. You know, it's um it's a little late in the day. We've actually been at this. We've been at this for a lot longer than the uh, the 20 minutes or so that the show is in right now. There there was a lot of, you know, getting adjusted. We had a new announcer. We had to do everything. We had to go over what the various hand signals meant. And it's been it's been a long day up here on the station. This is all this is all after I did the vents and stuff. I did the vents. I had to do a bunch of other vents over in the over in the mining colony and I I helped I helped the ensign get situated, dude. It's been it's been a long day. At any rate, Jeremy uh Renner is the he's like the tag champion of all the all the dudes in the posse. He has never not never once been tagged. He's too fast, he's too athletic, he's all he's all that and then some and these these dudes decide this is it. This is the year we have to tag Jeremy Renner. So they all they all team up on him at the at the event of his his nuptials. He's he's getting married and they all decide this is the perfect time to get him. The game is ruthless. It's ruthless like that. They'll get you at any time. You could be you could be in labor with your child and Ed Helms will bust in and tag and now you're it. Or maybe maybe Hannibal Buress or uh John Hamm or the that dude from from New Girl. Uh I forget his name. He, he might he might come in. They could all get you at any time, and they decide. Well, we know where he's going to be at the wedding, at the time of the wedding. That's one of the, that's one of the major issues with tagging Jeremy Renner. He he hides his locale very well. Not only is he a master of parkour and all that stuff, he also he hides his location so they can't they can't pin him down. But they know he's going to be at the wedding. They're all going to team up. They're all going to get him. I like this movie. I had a good time. We went to see it on a. On a Monday afternoon at the at the downtown theater, there was there was a fairly big crowd for this. John Hamm, I thought was really good in this. I like John Hamm. I think that I think that he is he's one of my favorite actors. I've heard him I've heard him a few times on Comedy Bang Bang, which is a which is a show I like. And dude has an amazing sense of humor. He is far funnier than he is a leading man. And in this, he got to flex his funniness and. He came through great. One of the things I, one of the things I liked about this movie was it has actually like pretty decent action sequences. When they go to try and tag Jeremy Renner, it cuts to this slow motion deal where he's like, he's like narrating what's going on. Like now he's trying to move behind me, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch him with this towel and flip him through the air, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna duck like this and jump straight up over, over a coconut tree. It's like that, but it's a little more. It's more fun than that, but they don't they don't jump over any coconut trees. They do they do do a lot of slow motion leaping about. Let's let's see what they got to say about this flick over at over at Rotten Tomatoes. It is presently fifty five percent with with the critics and seventy two percent with the peeps. It's a it's a movie for the people. It's a comedy. It was directed by it's directed by Jeff Tomsick, who you may. You may know from his other flicks that that I don't think that he has any other flicks. I I apologize for that. I I was like going ahead and going into a going into a thing while I while I uh, went around on <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes and turns out homie homie has got nothing. Uh, let's see, the movie came out this year and uh, dang, I am I am the worst right now. I don't even know how you're putting up with this. You might as well. Just hit the button. Just hang up on me. I'm I'm getting the fade. I'm getting. I need, I need something. But with this, with this sugar embargo, this would be like the time it'd be perfect to mac down on a Snicker bar, the the number one candy bar of all of time and space. It would be a perfect time to get one of those, but I can't. So all I can get is like maybe an apple or a cucumber or a dill pickle, some celery with some peanut butter. That might be be something I'll consider, but the peanut butter gets me all my mouth all sticky, so I don't I don't know. Sugar free peanut butter isn't isn't exciting as real peanut butter is. It's not as exciting as like Jif. You know, when you eat a, a spoonful of Jif, you get that you get the the sugar 
and the peanuts with the sugar-free peanut butter. All you get's the peanuts. It's like it's like eating a eating a handful of nuts, but all all smushed up. So the the movie's called Tag. I liked it. I thought it was I thought it was pretty fun. If you need like a light-hearted kind of summer comedy, you just want to go. You want to go spend a little bit of time over at the theater without really putting like a ton of thought into it. You just want to you want to sit there and get some giggles. This one. It's not the best one of all time. It's not the worst one of all time. On the good old-fashioned Source Magazine mic meter with one being a dud and five being an all-time classic, I am going to go ahead and give Tag a solid 2.5 eh, mic, maybe. No, I'm going to say three, three mic. mics. Three mics. The island is in the past. I want to show you the future. Blue's DNA will form the architecture of a completely new creature. What is that thing? They made it. There's a town five miles from here. If we don't shut this down, everything changes. Blue! Ready PG-13. Okie dokie, arty chokies. The... The third and final movie that I saw this week, I actually saw a couple others, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with my, with my giant week of movies. The, the third and final movie that we saw this week was, what's it's gonna be one of the, uh, one of the big movies of the entire summer. It's a movie known as Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. It's the, it's the latest in the Jurassic, Jurassic Park saga. I, I like dinosaurs as much as the next guy. And after, after that last episode, I, I realized I might actually like dinosaurs more, more than the next guy. But I'm not like the biggest Jurassic Park dude that there is out there. I like it. I like it. I think it's fine. I, I think the dinosaurs are neat and stuff, but when when Jurassic Park first came about, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't my jam. It was it was like my brother's jam, which doesn't mean that it can't be mine, but it it wasn't. I was I was kind of like in this deal where I was into like indie films and art films and things like that. And there there's like this whole big period of time of movies where I I didn't see any of these things. And Jurassic Park was that was during that that phase. the The movie theater that I worked at was the Arty Farty of the UA Cinemas here in Santa Rosa. There was UA Five where they would play most of the most of the big budget popcorn movies, and I worked at UA Six with with uh, my main man Gino Vega, and they would play the the more Arty Farty type movies there. Things like Nell or Rob Roy played there. Things like that. But for whatever reason, they they actually played Jurassic Park there. And when it when it came out, that was that was like the biggest movie I can think of that I that I worked. We had to um we had to use a snowblower to empty out the theater of all the popcorn. We would we would go through the aisles and blow it to the front, and people there would use shovels. To shovel the remains into into garbage bags. The movie was the movie was huge, and I, I kind of think that a lot of the extra work that I had to do led to me having some some kind of resentment toward Jurassic Park. You know, this was the thing that was making me break my back, having to wear a snowblower in the in the movie theater. But I but I digress. I know that I've seen Jurassic Park one, and I may have seen Jurassic Park two and three. The the old wife insists that I have, but I don't, I don't directly recall seeing them, but I did, I did see the Jurassic World one that was the Jurassic World before, before this, so I was, I was well prepared for this. The, the theater was jam-packed, as you know, we're having this weird situation going on with a, with a remodel, and we were frozen out of Ocean's 8 a couple times, so to avoid doing that, I got to the I got to the actual building almost an hour in advance, just just because I knew that this would be big. I knew it would be a big deal. So we got there early and we kinda like lounged around the lobby. We played some video games, we played the claw machine, we we goofed around on our phones playing Pokemon Go. The 
the area of the movie theater is right in between two different Pokestops. So we just kind of like, we would get one, then we'd get the other, get one, get the other. And it was, you know, it was all fun and stuff. And we were able to, we were able to secure some nice seats, but the, the place was, it was like, they were swinging from the rafters. It was pandelirium going wild in there for sure. There were like a million people. There were people with screaming babies. There were like teenagers on their phones. I got to say, I have been talking to you guys about how they're, how they're switching over to the recliner seat reserved ticket deal at the, at the theater. And I've been telling you how I enjoy the, I enjoy the old way of running in there like a maniac and trying to get my seat. But I got to tell you, man, I'm over it. I am over it. This experience of seeing Jurassic World was so whack. There was so much, so many distractions. And I myself, I'm easily distracted. If I see a light out of the corner of my eye, I look. If I hear a noise, I look. I can't help it. So I do like, I do like as serene as experience as possible. And I've discovered that when you go to the the recliner theaters with the reserved seats, you do get, you do get a more like, a, just a more calm environment. And I, I think I'm ready for it, man. I'd have to say I, I may be, I may be just, might be over it altogether. And I'm apologize for going like five minutes into the review without, without actually talking about the movie. So I will, I'll get into that. Uh, it was all right. It was okay. The, the basic plot of the thing is that the island where Jurassic World was on in the last one, it's now, it's now gone volcanic. And all the, all the dinosaurs there are in danger of getting swept out to sea or burned by lava or, or whatever happens when, when your island gets destroyed. So the people of the world are, they're in a tizzy. They don't know. Should they rescue the dinosaurs? Are the dinosaurs endangered species or... Are the dinosaurs genetic abominations that don't deserve to live? They get, they get everybody back to talk about this. Ian Malcolm, played by uh, Jeff Goldblum, is back. He's talking before Congress about what he, what he thinks, and they're just you know it's a big, it's a big political mess. Do we save these dinosaurs or do we allow them to rest in peace? If you, if you asked me, I would say we should probably let them rest in peace. I. I worry about what a pterodactyl could do if it was released into the general population or what kind of what kind of effects having a T-Rex could have on the on the indigenous animals of wherever it is that you place them. But at the same time, I don't want to let them all die either. I I do want to take into consideration that by the time this movie has come out, the dinosaurs have been like back in existence for for like 25, 30 years. So you do kind of got to take that into consideration. It's not like they're a flash in the pan. They've been back for, they've been back for a while, but, um, I don't know. I'd probably, I'd probably let them go, but, uh, I, I tend to err on the side of caution when it comes to, when it comes to things like that. You'll hear stories every once in a while about how, like, somebody brought in, like, some kind of an animal to help hunt another animal, and once it got a release into a new environment, it completely wiped out the entire ecosystem. I would definitely worry about something like that happening with um with these dinosaurs but uh that is that's like the main conflict of the movie there's like this whole side plot with animals being weaponized and all kinds of stuff it seems like they're always trying to weaponize animals in Jurassic Park and i don't know i think it would be cool to have like a weaponized tyrannosaurus on my on my side but i i would think that if i if I tried to sick it on some soldiers, they would just gun it down. They would use like those those uh, uranium tipped bullets and just rip it to shreds. But I, you know, what do I know? I'm not um I'm not a master of warfare by by any means. Maybe just like the psychological effects of having a having some ISIS troops get attacked by a Tyrannosaurus Rex might be enough to sway some minds. I don't know, but there there's always that going on in Jurassic Park. The the movie stars Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. I, I like Bryce Dallas Howard. I don't get to see her enough. She has a she has an interesting look. Her eyes are so light, and her face is like a weird, interesting shape. When you when you look at her clothes, she kind of resembles a gray, like an alien, like a gray. And I don't mean this as an insult. She's a very attractive young lady. She just has um she has an interesting look about her. I I think that in this role. I, I don't know how much I feel Chris Pratt. I like Chris Pratt. I'm a big Parks and Rec fan, and I like Guardians of the Galaxy. I used to watch Homeboy on the Everwood back on the WB in the day, but I think that his charisma is a lot tied up in his sense of humor, and the 
the character that he plays in Jurassic World is kind of kind of a humorless dude. He's very serious, very stoic, very all that stuff. And I don't know, I don't know if Chris Pratt is the best guy for this. He's not bad by any stretch, but I don't think that they're, I don't think they're getting the most out of him that they could out of Chris Pratt. Me? I don't know. Over, overall though, I, I think honestly, I'd have to say that I thought the movie was, I thought that it was only, only okay. It had, it had all those familiar Jurassic Park tropes. You know, you got super smart velociraptors. You got like T-Rex howling to the sky. And it was, it was just, it was a Jurassic Park movie. If you like Jurassic Park movies, you will for sure like this. It, it played really long to me. It felt like it would, it felt like it would never end. And that's, that's never a good sign when you're, when you're watching a movie, you do want it to end. You want to see what's going to happen, but you shouldn't feel like, I, I wish the end was here now. And I I definitely felt like that. It, it felt like it was gearing up to finish a few different times and it it didn't finish. Let's see what they let's see what they got to say about this one over on Tomatoes right now. Let's look at um let's look at some of the some of the stats. It is rated PG thirteen for intense sequence of sci fi violence. There is a lot. A lot of violence in this. I would I would be cautious about taking young kids. There are some very, very sad scenes, and there is a lot of, a lot of, I would say, horror elements to this movie. There's a lot of peril. The movie was directed by J. A. Boyona, who, let's see what um, let's see what Mr. Bayona has directed in the past. He is known for he did Orphanage, A Monster Calls, The Impossibles. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with any of those flicks. This would have to be considered his. His big budget movie debut. It stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, James Cromwell is in it, Justice Smith, who you may know from the Get Down on Netflix. That's a pretty good show. It it ran for one hour and twenty nine minutes, but it it felt a lot longer than that. I have to be honest with you. I wasn't was not enthused with the runtime of the movie. And as we speak. Right now, at the moment, it is 50% with the critics and 62% with with the peeps. The people in the theater did seem to enjoy it. There was a lot of, lot of hooting, a lot of hollering, a lot of cheering, a lot of stuff like that. I I just kind of think it wasn't to my taste. There were there were some cool dinosaurs, and the number one dinosaur of all the times, the Ankylosaurus was represented in this, represented very well. So I was, I was pleased by that. And just like in every, every recent Jurassic Park movie, it seems like they, they're making up some new, some new super scary dinosaur and that, you know, that's always kind of cool, but it's, it's becoming a trope. They got to go, they got to go somewhere different with this. I know that it makes, I know it makes a ton of money, but we may get into the point where Jurassic Park, Jurassic World is kind of, kind of run its course the the dinosaurs are amazing though there's like at no point where you're like this looks super phony it all looks really really great i have to say the the effects have come a long long way from the from the first one which was terrific in its own right no no disrespect to uh stevie spielberg so on the good old-fashioned source magazine mike meter with one being a dud and five being an all-time classic because because the dinosaurs were so great i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna give jurassic world fallen kingdom three Three mics. mics three mics Drop by supportthereport.com and consider becoming a show patron for as low as a measly dollar a month. It's the right thing to do. You made it this far, it's time. Final segment, the IC Robots Radio Pop Culture slash Toy News slash Other Boring Stuff Informational Moment. Man, that is, 
that is going to take some getting used to hearing a hearing a different voice do those do those famous words don't don't wave your arms i i absolutely appreciate what you i'm sorry kate i'm sorry i appreciate i appreciate you doing this i do from the bottom of my heart i mean it's your it's like your your first week here and you're you're in the booth recording intros i i appreciate it from the bottom of my of the bottom of my heart sorry i i got all choked up there for a sec i thought about i thought about that coffee can getting launched into space and all the all the words that came out of that can and it it just it got me got me uh you know a bit bit choked up now now this isn't this isn't something that we normally do in in this topic but i I had I just got word the other day that Hall of Fame professional wrestler Big Van Vader has passed away. I have I have been a fan of Big Van for forever for like not as long as I've been into wrestling because I've been into wrestling for a long time, but I have been I've been a fan of this guy for years and years and years and years. He is he is a big a big galoot who wears a mask with with like steam pipes coming out of it. The mask is the mask is horrific. It's scary. And he has like steam pipes coming out. And Vader himself is he is a big flippin' dude. He was he was played by by a former NFL character by the name of Leon White. And Leon White was he was a terrific athlete. So when he got the when he got the fearsome identity of Vader, everything clicked and he he quickly led his way to a to a Hall of Fame career. He won world championships in Europe. He won world championships in America. He won them in Japan. He won them in he won them in Mexico. He won them he won them everywhere. The man the man was a very well accomplished professional wrestler, and he passed away at the at the young age of sixty three, which is it's too it's too young to go, man. But the life of a the life of a professional wrestler is a hard one. Emotionally, it's a very hard one. Very hard one physically. And shining stars like Vader, they're they're just not meant they're just not meant long for this for this earth. I I had the opportunity to meet Vader. Well, I had the opportunity to speak to speak a few words to to the man many, many years ago at a at a toy show in San Jose. He was he was there, there shining autographs, signing autographs rather, and I, I wanted to go up to him and say what's up, but I, I get into these positions where I don't want to pay for an autograph, so therefore, I don't want to bother you in any way because I realize you're there, you're there to make money. He was sitting there with, with his handler, his manager, whoever, which, which sadly was not, was not hardly race or was not. Jim Cornette, but he he was there with somebody, and they had they had the Vader mask sitting there on the table, and it was it was beautiful. This is a big. I imagine it's plastic, but it's made to look like it's metal. This big, this big steel mask with horns, and it's just it's very ornate. It's very cool. If you want to see, hop on over to the IC Robots Instagram. That's uh, IC Robots I S E E R O B O T S on Instagram. I. I posted this this picture that I that I took of him well the mask that that day at at the show I'm getting I'm getting a little uh, a little choked up here I I went up and I wanted to take a picture of the mask but I didn't want to bother them so I I just kind of quietly said do you mind if I take a picture of this real quick and he went go ahead he he had that Vader voice he's like go ahead and I took a picture and I I, I thanked him and then. Then I looked up and I noticed that he was um he was doing what I thought was eyeing my wife. But being that he's Big Van Vader, I'm not about to say anything about it. But when I when I mentioned this to her, when when I, I told her of his his passing, and she said he just smiled and said hello. In her in her mind, he looked up and he said hello, and he was he was very polite. And I don't know I don't know if it was me. Like looking at him with with like clouded eyes, like I could only see fear. I could only see Vader. I was only, I was only nervous. Whereas to him, he was, you know, he was like a large fifty year old guy, and you know, she, she just said hello, and he said hello back, and maybe he said hello, and then she said hello back. It was, it was very cordial, and I, I just saw it all weird because I was, I was already shook being in the presence of, of such a monster. Well, that that's better. 
better than having no run in with with Big Van Vader. I I was a big fan of his work. He was a hard hitting dude, great worker, athletic. He could do moon salts. He could do drop kicks. Guy, the guy was he was the best big man of all time, no doubt. First first ballot wrestling observer newsletter Hall of Famer. So with the sadness in my eyes, I have to say, Big Van Vader, I'm reminisce over you. of vintage and current film and television since 2010. Shall we play a game? Featuring in-depth conversations on sci-fi, horror, fantasy, comics, toys, and conventions. Game over, man. It's game over. Geek Fest Rants is an entertainment podcast for genre geeks like you. So say we all. So say we all. Join us by listening in at iTunes, YouTube, and at geekfestrants.com. All right, we are back after after all that sadness. What a sad, what a what a grief filled episode. You gotta you gotta make sure to check out Carlos over at geekfestrants.com. You can find that on the IC Robots Radio, the radio feed. You can also find all the back episodes over at geekfestrants.com. It's a show. It's a show I love. He he really knows what he's talking about when it comes to Star Wars and other other uh you know, Star Wars type sci-fi related related topics. Let's see what else is going on here. I got I have a note that says tag equals Ewoks. I am not I'm not sure what that means. I tag equals Ewoks. I I wrote that in later, but I, I seriously have no idea what what that means. Do you have any clue if you if you know what tag equals Ewoks means in my notes, please, please hit me up. You can find me at Icy Robots on Twitter. That's I S E E Robots. The same thing on, same thing on Instagram. Go join the Facebook group, facebook.com backslash Icy Robots. If you, if you know what tag equals Ewoks, what does that mean? I, I don't have a lot of things involving Ewoks, so I'm not. I'm not sure what um what that might be about. I tag equals Ewoks. Oh, 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 oh! Now I know. This was something I was supposed to mention during the during the tag movie review. There is there is a scene where they're like in the forest and they're trying to capture Jeremy Renner, and he he springs all these Ewok like traps on them. There's like a net, and like a tree comes down and. Hits uh hits Ed Helms right in the right in the esophagus. I wonder why I didn't immediately think tag the movie. I I don't know. It's hot. It's hot. The the air on the base keeps going in and out. So the it gets it gets really really musty. I I do my best to keep it operating, but it it gets it gets a little a little rough some of the times. So a little while back we had Father's Day, and some of you guys have been hitting me up asking me. Hey, Icy Robots, what did you, what did you do for Father's Day? We know you're an amazing father, so you must have, you must have had an amazing day, and I will say that I did. I just, um, I wanted to go over some of the, some of the gifts that I got. I got a couple, a couple good gifts, one from, one from 2.0, and one from, one from the old wife, and we, we started off the day, we went to the flea market, like we always do, and then we... Then we came back. I woke up. I had like really bad allergies that day, which is which is a bummer. But I, I tried to I tried to put it out of my mind. You know, you gotta you gotta sometimes when you have like minor pains, you gotta just you gotta put them out of your mind because while you will be in pain at the moment when it's all said and done, and you have the memories of what went down, you won't remember that you had a headache. You'll remember that you had a good time. It's not it's not always easy to do that though, but. I was, I was able to, I was able to, I was able to tough it out as it, as it were. And then, then after the, uh, the flea market, we had to, um, we had to take 2.0 over to her work. She got a job. I'm very proud of her. We had to take her over to her work. And then we went and we, we walked around the mall, the wife and I, which was, which was fun. Um, I sat in one of those massage chairs. She bought me 15 minutes on the massage chair, which was, which was nicer than you would think it would be after, after you get over that initial few minutes of like sitting in a massaging chair in front of everyone at the mall, you start to you start to feel it. And the fifteen minutes was pretty good. I was <laughs> I was pretty happy. And then um 
we we came home and she made me a steak and that was good. I ate that and we watched we watched wrestling. There was a Money in the Bank, the Money in the Bank pay per view, and that was that was pretty fun. I got um I got a couple cool things. The one thing that I really 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 love that I've wanted for a while. She got me she got me the one Rogue One figure that I needed to complete Saw Gerrera's posse. She got me she got me Bodhi Rook. She got me Bodhi. Bodhi the pilot. He is a former Imperial pilot. Bodhi has a strong piloting as well as technical skills. He's he's the one that has eluded me. According to according to Earl Green from the logbook.com, which is a which is a great site, this one has been hard to come by. She had to go onto eBay and get it, which was which was really nice of her. I, I definitely appreciate that. I haven't opened Bodhi yet, but then we we were out and about, and we went over to the Bat Cave. That's the vintage toy store here in Santa Rosa. I, I like it over there. We went out, and she got me um she got me two tubes. One of the other guys I was missing from from Saw Guerrero's posse in Rogue One. And now now I got now I got them all, and I'm a very very happy person. I got a bust open Bodhi. He's a nice looking figure. It looks a lot like a Riz Ahmed, and his his accessory is neat. He has that he has that like that cable that he was trying to attach to get the communications to go back up. I dig that. And then she got me a, a sweatshirt. A sweatshirt that says the All Valley Karate Tournament 1982. I think it's 82. I don't remember. Whatever year, whatever year it was that the that the famous movie comes out. It looks like it looks like a nice souvenir sweatshirt from a few as if you went as if you went. I got a got a message here in my phone. Let's see what it says. It is from it's from Chris at the comic store. He says that he wants to see Jurassic Park. That's cool. I, I've already seen it. But um, <laughs> if you want to go again, Chris from uh, Comics for the Win, I would definitely be down for that. If you live here in Santa Rosa, Comics for the Win is definitely our best our best comic store. Our biggest is Outer Plains, but I I, I don't like it over there. It um, kind of smells like B.O. I hate to... I hate to say it, but they have a lot of, they have a lot of, like, card games and things going on over there, which is dope, man, if you're into that, all, all the power in the world to you, but the, the place has so many people in it, and it smells like B.O., I don't know what, I don't know what you want me to say, but they do have a good, good selection of comics over there, but I, I go for the personal service of comics for the win on, on Santa Rosa Avenue. Chris is cool, Tatiana's cool, Melissa's cool, they're all cool, it's a nice, Nice little shop with a with a family a family appeal. Uh, what else? What else is going on? Oh, the the Toys R Us, the Toys R Us on Santa Rosa Avenue. By the time by the time this comes out, this comes out on Wednesday, and the Wednesday will be the final day of the Toys R Us on Santa Rosa Avenue. We went we went over there today just to see what was popping, just you know, just to go in there and get the get the vibe one last time. And most of the store is completely blocked off. They have what's left in the front. You can't get into the back, and it is it's amazingly amazingly sad. I can't believe that this. I can't believe this is all happening. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem like Toys R Us could ever go out of business. And I I just hate to think that. I think about like all the times the wife and I'll be goofing around Friday, Saturday night, you know, and we're not we're not party animals by any means, and we'll be like, well, what should we do? And I'll go, let's just uh, let's go dip into Toys R Us, and we'd go walk around Toys R Us and have fun. We've been doing that for we've been doing that for twenty years now, the twenty or so years that we've been together. We've been going over there on Friday, Saturday nights, and looking around, and it's sad to think that sad to think that is all over, but. You gotta, you gotta move forward. It is, it is sad, but there's not, not a lot you can do about that kind of stuff. It's like, it's hurt, it hurts your heart, and it's bad, but at the same time, you don't have control over everything in the universe that you would like to have control over, so you just gotta, you gotta let some of these things slide off, and as sad as it is, I do, I do just have to let this one slide. If I, if I dig into it too deep, I, um, I'll get really upset, so I just... Try to let it slide to the side. <coughs> I I bought a comic. I bought a comic on eBay, and this is one. This is one that I I might go out there and send a recommendation for you. It's Marvel Marvel Comics X Force Volume One, 
Number 11, this is a Rob Liefeld classic. This is this is the first appearance of Domino, who was in... She was in Deadpool 2. She was played by Zazie Beetz, who's a hot, hot actress right now because of her work on Atlanta. She, she really has amazing, amazing hair. She shows off that amazing... That amazing flowing hair in um, Deadpool 2. She, she just seems like... She seems cool. Like, cool oozes off of her. And I would not be... I would not be surprised to see a Domino solo movie at some point. I would not at all be surprised to see that. I know they got Zazie Beats locked down for, I think it's four movies. They can't all be, they can't all be Deadpool movies. I know the next movie is going to be, be an X-Force movie and that she's going to be in that, but I would not be surprised to see her spin off. I was able to pick this comic up for $10.50 and if I can find another one, Around that price, I might get it too. I could see, I could see a nice upside on this. If you are the kind of person who invests in comics for, for future value, you gotta, you gotta do stuff like that sometimes. If you, if you try to have like a nice collection, you gotta try to think about the future. You know, you gotta think what books might go up in the future that are at a very low price now. And this was one, this was one I considered. I might, I might get another. So if you are into, uh, if you're into comic speculation to any degree, think about that one for your collect. Oh, she all on collection, collection. Oh, oh, oh! I didn't, I didn't even mention this. I should have, uh, I should have talked about this a second ago when I was talking about Toys R Us. I, I bought a cart. I bought one of those famous blue plastic shopping carts. It, it was only twenty bucks. I wanted some. Some kind of souvenir for the store that that would remind me what it was like. I asked about a bunch of the signage, but they they told me that anything that was branded they weren't able to sell. So I don't I don't know what's up with that. But they were able to sell the shopping cart, so I I got one of those. It's in it's in my garage. I I um I sell things on eBay, and I have like a bin where I keep like random loose packing material, like. Like air bubbles and paper, just like the random odds and ends that you use to fill in corners and stuff. And I, I put the cart there and I filled it with with all that stuff. I, I like seeing it there when I when I go in into the garage. It's a nice a nice reminder of the Toys R Us and I'm gonna be able to have it. And I think that it was I think that it was well worth the the price. I I don't know if your stores are still open, but this may be something that you can do as well. I, and this might, this might sound weird, and it is, it is a bit weird. But, but I plan to, um, I plan to check out the dumpsters after, after the store shuts down. Because they had, they had these nice vinyl banners that said Toys R Us. And I would love to have had one for, for the garage, but they wouldn't sell them to me, like I said. And my... My gut says that they're just going to wind up in the dumpster. I can't imagine they are going to send them anywhere. There isn't a, there isn't like a Toys R Us corporate office or anything. I think these are all going to end up there. So when the, when the store finally shuts down and when it finally gets cleaned out, I do plan on just rolling by and seeing what kind of weird stuff is in there. There might be all kinds of cool Toys R Us brands and stuff. Never know, man. You never... You never know, and I'm not above, I'm not above looking in a dumpster if there's something in there that I want. I mean, I'm not, not gonna get food or anything like that, but if there was like, if I walked by and the big R, the big R from the neon sign was back there, I'm definitely gonna get it, and if I see these, if I see these vinyl banners, I'm definitely gonna, gonna get it. They recently shut down the, um, the shoe store in the, uh, in Cottingtown Mall, the one, um, Foot Locker. They shut down the Foot Locker, and I just happened to be walking by, and I saw the entire dumpster was full of, like, Adidas signage, all kinds of really great stuff. If you were, like, a sneakerhead, if you were, like, way into that kind of stuff, this would be, like, a gold mine. There were, like, display racks, all kinds of really cool stuff. I, I like sneakers. I wear Sockanies. I like these, these Sockany Jazz. They're my preferred, preferred shoe, but, um, I... I could not help but notice all this great stuff in the in the Foot Locker dumpster when I was walking by. It was in the front of the mall. Don't think that I was like going through going through the back or whatever. This was, you know, this was out in front. I saw it. I noticed it. You couldn't help but notice it. They had like big sneaker displays, big posters with like LeBron James and Steph Curry. If you're into that stuff, this would have been 
this would have been a gold line, and as sad as it is, gold mine. As sad as it is, I hope that maybe there's some kind of a chance that they'll put some of that some of that Toys R Us stuff there too. You never know. You never know anything. Anything is possible. I would like to get the neon sign. It's not neon. The big light up sign that's on the on the side of the building. I would like to get. I would like to get the R. The big the uh the big R. If you go over to my Instagram, you'll see I've taken I've taken like a million pictures of that thing. I wouldn't mind having it and putting it out in the backyard. I would let. I would let the greenery grow over it. Let it look all planted of the apes. It would, it would be mine. I would love it if I see it. If I see it, I'm taking it. Next, next week the show drops on the Fourth of July, so we're gonna we're gonna take that time off. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a classic episode repost. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be episode one one nine, which is the one where I talk about Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman movie that just came out, and then I do a retro toy marketplace about um. Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock by Rimco. A nice, nice patriotic toy line. It's a good episode. Check it out. It'll be, it'll be dropping then. And then we'll be back the week after that with, I think, I think we're going to talk about Ant-Man and the New Japan wrestling show that I'm going to at the, at the Cow Palace. My, um, my dude Gino Vega is going to that too. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get the chance to see him there. He has much, much better seats than we have. So I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to um, say hi, but he might. He might wave up at us. We are we're hanging from the the rafters. We're way in the back. Not really. The cop palace isn't. It's not that big. We should we should have a good vantage point. That could be a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. There's some some good matches for that. I'm looking forward to that. So until then, hop on over to iTunes, please. Leave us an iTunes reviews. You can find us under. Find us under IC Robots Radio. These really help in their their little algorithm for us to find new new listeners. And if you leave one, I'll read it on the air. I'll read it out, and then I will I'll make you as famous as me. Make sure to hop on over to Classic Wrestling Matches and Mags on Facebook. That's that's one of my favorite wrestling pages on all of Facebook. Classic Wrestling Matches and Mags. Go over there. You can't help but find it if you type it into. Can't help but find it if you type it into the bar. Lots of good, lots of good picks. Uh, I guess that's about it. So for me, Engineer Emily, Ensign Kate, for the memory of Ensign and Melissa, we will miss you. They reminisce over you. For for Iceberg, AB Silver, Johnny Five, and everybody else in the entire world, this is me, Icy Robots, and I am signing off for episode number one. Five nine Jurassic World and a bunch of other stuff. If you don't know, Nino. has been an IC Robots Radio production. IC Robots Radio is a listener supported in day R. If you like what we do and we make your day a little easier, please consider tossing a few bucks our way to help keep the life support running. All money collected goes to help us prepare for future space pirate attacks. Go on over to supportthereport.com for all the details. Thanks and have a great week. Coming up next, The Midnight Movie, right here on KFTY Channel 50, television, north of the gate.
E-L-E. That's right, E-L-E. What does E-L-E stand for? Everybody love everybody. Everybody love everybody. Right there up on the wall. <laughs>